Hello, I'm Jeff Cavins, and today we're looking at the readings for Pentecost Sunday. You know, that Sunday where a lot of people are wearing red. You might ask yourself the question, why are they wearing red? Well, red is significant when it comes to the flame of the Holy Spirit, which is something we see on the day of Pentecost. A couple of things about this very, very special Sunday in our calendar. Uh, number one, you're gonna notice some different kinds of readings. You're gonna be hearing readings from the New Testament. And this comes from the very beginning of the Acts of the Apostles, verse three, to them, Jesus presented himself alive after his passion by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking of the kingdom of God. The 40 days after Easter are known in the church as the days of mystagogy. It's the time where we learn about the kingdom of God. And the readings are specifically geared towards the neophyte for those who have just come into the church. The church feels that it's important that they learn about the king and his kingdom. And that's something that we all need to go back to. We all need a remedial education when it comes to the kingdom because that's what our life is all about, following Jesus in his kingdom. And we are subjects of the king. And we are out there telling people about his marvelous kingdom and we are fulfilling his will in the world today. So the readings are a little bit different. We also see something powerful taking place here, the promise of the Holy Spirit coming to the, the uh, early church and filling them with power. And we see kind of the plan of expansion of the church after the Holy Spirit comes upon them. In chapter one of the Acts of the Apostles, verse six, so when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now we know here, and in chapter two, we have the, the actual day of Pentecost that takes place here. In chapter two, the disciples were filled with the, with the Holy Spirit. In chapter one, we hear about the mystagogy and we hear about them in Jerusalem and this promise of the Father, they're going to receive power. Now that word power is the word dunamis, where we get the word dynamite, power. And the gospel is gonna spread from Jerusalem and then it's gonna go out to Judea and Samaria, and then it's gonna to go to the uttermost parts of the world. But the only way that it's going to happen is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now on the day of Pentecost, something very special happens when the Holy Spirit comes upon them. There's a manifestation with the tongues of fire and they begin speaking in other languages. The result of this is that they go out in power and they become authentic witnesses of Jesus. Now you might say, well, that would have been really neat to be back there 2000 years ago. Well, guess what? You get to be back there. When it comes to our experience of Pentecost, we look to confirmation. After we're baptized, we are confirmed, which is the completion of the work of the Holy Spirit in our life, empowering us to be witnesses. But caution, this beautiful, beautiful sacrament of, of confirmation oftentimes is relegated to simply uh, a phase in life a stage in life that we go through in the church. And how many young people today will be confirmed but not know exactly what is happening? When we are confirmed, we're filled with the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit completes the graces of baptism and really empowers us to be witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the only way that the gospel can go from Jerusalem to Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth is simply by the power of the Holy Spirit. If we will proclaim the message of Jesus, God will confirm that message with signs and wonders. And signs and wonders gain the attention of the crowd, once again, that lives are changing and we'll be able to give an explanation based on the miracle that they have witnessed. And that miracle may be a healing, that miracle may be someone rising from the dead, that miracle may be your life of peace and joy. A transformation that's taken place in your own life by the power of Jesus. And so the readings this week are very, very important, especially for the neophytes, those who have come into the church. And by the way, welcome to all those who came in during Easter. And now what we're going to do is we're gonna to begin to walk in the kingdom, 
in his power and he's going to confirm that proclamation with signs and wonders. You see, we are created to be people of signs and wonders. And people will look at us in awe and wonder, hmm, what makes those people tick? And I'm reminded of what St. Peter said, we should always be ready to give an account for that hope that is within us. Neophytes, welcome to the church.